Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. So today I'll be uploading a fairly quick video again from my original channel. Where I'll be talking about movies, of course. And I'll post a link down below for my second channel where I'll talk about movies and such, obviously. And then I'll post a link down below for Elvis as well if you're interested in some gaming content. So let's just get straight to the point, shall we? Oh yeah, here we go. So reviewing Back to the Future 3, so, yes, yeah, a western themed time traveling movie, oh yeah, I haven't reviewed a western film in a while anyway, at least it takes me like forever to do so anyway, I don't mind the western genre, so this would seem like another opportunity to do that kind of a thing, and this film was shot pretty much back to back simultaneously with the second movie, so there was that. Obviously, they were trying to make sure they get the movie right, I guess. Even though, like I just said, th these two films, one and two, were filmed simultaneously. So, yikes, that's, that had to be rough, definitely. But anyway, so yeah, a bit of a production chaos, behind the scenes kind of a thing. So there's that. That's, that's not easy to do, obviously. But since I discussed the other two, so I might as well get to the last one, obviously. So, here we are. And I just thought this would be a good way to talk about it, of course, as a series of whole, and just talk about this finale and whatnot. And so, of course, let's just talk about the plot and just get into the characters and whatnot. So the the third movie, like I said, he has to do, something to do with the Wild Wild West, of course. Wild well, Stranded in 1955 during his time travel adventures, Mark McFly discovers that his friend Doc is trapped in 1985. And was killed by this and this visual called Mad Dog Biff's great grandfather. So yikes! Let's just say that Mark McFly has to do something about this, even though he might be instructed to not do in, do anything, not interfere with this at, like at all. So despite the fact that he was told not to explicitly not to go to the specific time period, but he goes anyway. He, travels to 1985 to rescue Doc and as an attempt to again return to 1985 but obviously it's never as, is, as it seems as you tell from the previous two films matters would just get, continue to get complicated obviously as Doc falls in love with this individual who was supposed to have died in the original timeline but ends up rescuing her Anyway, which of course arches the timeline uh, even further. So there's that, and it's just say that it just complicates the situation because they severely altered the timeline. That's the thing, though. Let's just say that in 1955, just mere moments after witnessing Doc disappear into this thing here, let's just say that. Marvin Fly learns that Doc was sent 70 years into the past in 1885. Using the information from Doc's 1885 letter, Marvin Fly and the 1955 Doc find, out, find and repair the Denardian so that Marvin Fly can return to 1885. However, after finding it, Marvin Fly comes to a, a tombstone with Doc's name. With the some kind of statement that Doc was shot by Biff's grandfather. So yeah, the character named Mad Dog. Six days after writing the, that very letter, and yes, of course, despite the letter's warning, like I was mentioning a moment ago, instructed him do not go back in time. Mario McFly does just that. He travels back to 1885 to save Doc, arriving in the mix of this this pursuit of course and let's just say that yeah ends up tearing the car fuel line in the process and just Christ yeah not having an easy time whatsoever like at all but then of course the the character of Margaret Fly gets chased by this bear he's knocked out cold and found by his Irish born great grandparents who allowed him to stay for the night. The next morning, honor the alias 
clean eastward, Marmot Fly arrives in this area that runs, uh, let's just say, gets in quite a bit of trouble. Let's put it that way, folks. Oh, definitely. This is pretty much in conclusion to the original trilogy. And yes, going back to the Old West. Oh, yeah. I actually didn't mind this setting, really. And I do view this as a vast improvement over the second movie. But maybe that's just me, though. Whatever. So anyway, and this was definitely a crazy ride, no pun intended. And yeah, it just goes into the whole spirit of this kind of thing. And it doesn't feel like an exact repeat, really, or anything, which I appreciate. And... Yeah, of course, we see the central characters of the first film, of course, Mark McFly and all that jazz, of course. And it does have something to do with his family, Mark McFly family, but the Matt scientist character, Doc, of course, he will obviously be an important part of the story as well, which I do appreciate. We get a bit of his screen time, and he does play an important part of the story, more so, I guess, than the previous two films, and I do appreciate that. I guess he is a cool character, after all. He's a really cool character in his own little way, obviously. He's very dramatic. I mean, it's a comedy, yes, but there's lots of times where the film does provide lots of great, thrilling moments from a Western. So, it was that. It does mess the two of, like, sci-fi and Western these two elements usually don't blend together, but in this case it does. Surprise, surprise, I guess. And I'll give this film an overall rating of a 7.3 out of 10. It gets a 7.3 out of 10 from me. And as always, thanks for watching, and take care. Until next time, see ya. Oh yeah, later.